Welcome CFA candidates. Today, we're diving into mergers and acquisitions or M&A, a crucial topic in corporate finance for CFA level two. Whether you're analyzing synergies, understanding valuation methods, or tackling integration challenges, mastering M&A is key to success on the exam. This guide will take you through the entire process, breaking down every critical concept into simple, actionable steps. So grab your headphones and let's get started. Section one, why do companies pursue mergers and acquisitions? M&A transactions are transformative corporate strategies. But why do companies choose this path? Let's explore the five primary motives. Growth. Acquisitions allow companies to expand quickly, whether by entering new markets, acquiring technology, or increasing market share. Synergies. Synergies create additional value when two companies combine. These can be cost synergies, like saving money through operational efficiency or revenue synergies, such as cross-selling products to a larger customer base. Diversification. Companies often merge with firms in different industries to reduce risk and smooth revenue streams across economic cycles. Competitive advantage. By acquiring competitors, companies can strengthen their position in the market or eliminate key threats. Tax benefits. Acquiring a company with substantial debt can create tax shields, reducing taxable income. Section two, the M&A process. Now, let's walk step-by-step step through the M&A process, from strategy to integration. Step one, strategy and target identification. First, companies must define their strategic objectives. Are they looking for growth, diversification, or synergies? Once the goals are clear, they analyze potential targets. Industry analysis. This involves assessing market trends competitive dynamics, and growth potential within the industry. Target screening. Potential targets are evaluated based on financial performance, market position, and strategic fit. For example, a company aiming to enter the e-commerce space might look for profitable startups with a strong online presence. The output of this step is a short list of potential acquisition targets that align with the acquirer's strategic goals. Step two, valuation of the target. Next, we move to valuation, arguably the most critical step in the M&N process. Let's look at the primary methods used to value a target company, discounted cash flow, ECF analysis. This method estimates the target's value by projecting its future free cash flows and adjusting them for the time value of money. The idea is to determine how much those cash flows are worth in today's dollars using a discount rate that reflects the company's risk. Example. If the target is expected to generate steady cash flows over the next several years, the DCF analysis will calculate the present value of those cash flows to assess the company's intrinsic value. Comparable company analysis. This approach evaluates the target's value by comparing it to similar companies in the same industry. The comparison is based on common financial ratios, such as enterprise value to EBITDA or price to earnings. Example. If peer companies are valued at 10 times their EBITDA and the target's EBITDA is $20 million, you'd multiply the target's EBITDA by 10 to estimate its enterprise value. Precedent Transactions This method examines past m and &E deals in the same industry to establish benchmarks for valuation. It's particularly useful for understanding how much buyers have historically paid for similar targets. Step Premium Calculation In addition to valuation, companies must account for the premium paid above the target's market value. The premium reflects the additional price the acquirer is willing to pay to gain control of the target, and it's typically expressed as a percentage of the market value. Step 3. Due Diligence Narrator. Once valuation is complete, due diligence begins. This stage is all about uncovering risks and validating assumptions. Financial Due Diligence examines revenue streams, liabilities, and financial projections. Legal due diligence ensures compliance with regulations and uncovers any pending lawsuits or intellectual property disputes. Operational due diligence analyzes supply chains, workforce, and overall efficiency. Cultural compatibility checks if the two companies' cultures align as cultural mismatches can derail integrations. Step four, structuring the deal. Deal structuring determines how the transaction will be executed. Transaction type. A stock purchase involves buying the target shares and assuming all liabilities, while an asset purchase allows the acquirer to pick and choose specific assets. Payment method. Deals can be structured as cash transactions, stock swaps, 
or mixed payments. For example, a mixed payment might involve 50% cash and 50% equity. Step 5. Regulatory Approvals MNA transactions must comply with legal and antitrust requirements. Antitrust laws. These prevent monopolistic practices and ensure fair competition. Foreign investment restrictions. Certain industries like defense or telecommunications may have restrictions on foreign ownership. Step 6. Integration planning and execution. Finally, integration planning ensures that the two companies combine smoothly to achieve the intended synergies. Cultural integration. Aligning organizational values and employee expectations is critical. Systems integration. Combining its systems, processes, and supply chains often presents logistical challenges. Leadership restructuring. Defining roles for executives helps avoid power struggles. Post-merger integration is the make or break phase of M and A, determining whether the deal achieves its intended value. Section 3. Critical M and A concepts. Synergies. Synergies are the cornerstone of M&A. For example, cost synergies might include saving $10 million annually by consolidating manufacturing plants. Revenue synergies, on the other hand, could involve cross-selling products to generate an additional $15 million in sales. EPS accretion and dilution. Earnings per share, or EPS, is a key metric in M&A. If the deal increases EPS, it's accretive. If it decreases EPS, it's dilutive. Enterprise value multiples, EV to EBITDA and EV to sales, are common multiples used to value target companies. For example, if the EV to sales multiple for peers is 4x and the target's revenue is $50 million, the implied EV is $200 million. Takeover defenses. In hostile takeovers, targets may employ defenses like poison pills, which dilute shares, or white knights, where they seek a friendly acquirer to block the hostile bid. Section 4. Challenges in M&A and M &E transactions come with significant challenges. Overpaying for a target erodes shareholder value. Cultural mismatches can lead to integration failures, and regulatory hurdles can delay or derail deals. Section 5. Practical Applications Strategic Acquisitions For example, Facebook's acquisition of Instagram helped it dominate social media. Distressed M&A Acquiring undervalued companies during economic downturns presents unique opportunities. Conclusion In summary, mastering the M&A process is vital for CF Level 2 candidates. By understanding the strategy, valuation, due diligence, and integration phases, you'll be well prepared to tackle M&A related questions in the exam and apply these concepts in your finance career. Thanks for listening.